What's up guys? Today we're gonna to talk all about pressure plates. We're gonna talk about the differences between all of the pressure plates, as well as some of the general functions and general properties of the pressure plates. So with that, let's jump right in. All right, so here I have all of the different types of pressure plates. We have the stone, polished black stone, wood, gold, and iron pressure plates. Um, and we also have them attached to repeaters using redstone dust. 15 blocks away. And this is just to show if the signal strength that it's outputting is 15 blocks, which is the maximum, um, or if it's lower than that. So now for the general properties of all of the pressure plates, they power the block that they are occupying themselves. So they basically power themselves, as well as the block that they are on top of. Um, and all of the powering rules apply to this. So redstone components adjacent to any of the powered blocks will also get powered. So this dust up here gets powered because the pressure plate itself is powered. This dust down here gets powered because the diamond block is powered. Um, and then also because the diamond block is powered, we can actually power dust immediately under it. Um, and this is particularly useful if you need to have like blocks all around this diamond block because this won't work and then this won't work generally if you're doing something like that. Um, so this guy is particularly useful. All right, so starting with the stone pressure plates, um, and this includes the polished blackstone pressure plate, these guys will only get powered by mobs, so they will not get powered by like item entities. They will also not get powered by projectile entities, and if I like threw a potion, it wouldn't do it either. But they do get powered by the player, which counts as a mob, um, and any other mob entities, such as like cats and villagers, cows, pigs, etc. When it is powered, it outputs a signal strength of 15, which is the maximum. So we can see that repeater is being lit and this is 15 blocks away. Um, so it's either 15 or zero. So it's very much an on or off type of thing. This is in contrary to the wood pressure plates, which can get powered by all entities except for thrown eggs and snowballs. So we can do it with an arrow. We can do it with item entities like this. And when the wooden pressure plate is powered, just like the stone pressure plates, it outputs a signal strength of 15, which again is the maximum, um, zero if it's off. So the wood pressure plate essentially just gets powered by everything and then it maxes out the signal strength. So it's a good like overall one to use unless you specifically don't want items to be kind of like interacting with your stuff. Um, now the more complicated pressure plates are the gold and the iron pressure plates. So like the wooden pressure plate, they get powered by everything. Um, except of course snowballs and eggs, like I just said. However, they output a signal strength dependent on however many entities are on top of them. So in the case of the gold pressure plate, it will add a signal strength for every single entity that is on top of it. So if I do like an arrow, it will do, and if I don't pick it up, it will do a signal strength of one. If I then throw an item on top of it with the arrow, it'll do a signal strength of two. If I throw out a bunch of random stuff from my inventory, we can get the signal strength quite high. Um, we got it all the way up to here. Um, and yeah, it'll max out at 15. So in order to get the maximum signal strength, it will require 15 items. After that, it won't get any stronger because that is the maximum signal strength. Now the iron pressure plate acts the exact same way as the gold one. However, the a number of items that you need is multiplied by 10. So if I throw all the same amount of stuff that I just had, like this, and I even put like the bow on it, and I throw the bow on it, maybe my grass, we can only get up to the second threshold here instead of like wherever we got it before. And this is because again, we need 10 times the amount of items. So in order to max out the signal strength with the gold one, we only need 15. Whereas with the iron one, we need 150 to get all the way up to the repeater there. Now these two pressure plates, the gold and the iron ones are a lot more situational than the wood and the stone pressure plates. And that's mainly because they only output like one signal strength if there's just one entity on top of them. So I would recommend avoiding them unless you're either using them very specifically for their functionality um, or if you really want to look luxurious. However, if you really want to look luxurious, you'd probably have to just put a repeater right next to it in order to make it act like you'd want um, because it only powers the one block next to it. So it doesn't even power this one right here if only one entity is on top of it. Um, in the case of the iron one, you need like 20 items or 20 like mobs to make it only go two. So if you do want to use them in place of the wood or stone ones, I would put a repeater right next to it um, or you can put it one block away with dust in between. Uh, mainly just because they're not going to behave the same way. So another property that all of the pressure plates have is that they will kind of linger after the entity or entities that were powering it are no longer on top of it. 
Um, and you've probably already noticed this when you're making a contraption like that, that. But if I step on the pressure plate and then step off, it'll kind of like linger there for a minute. Um, the wood and stone pressure plates will do this lingering for exactly 10 redstone ticks, which is half a second. The gold and the iron pressure plates only do it for five redstone ticks or a quarter of a second. Um, it might be kind of quiet on the video, but you can kind of like hear it. You can kind of hear it going faster than say the wood pressure plate. Um, the iron pressure plate is just as fast. And that's why a contraption like this kind of it sometimes feels finicky if you're using iron or wood pressure plates. Um, it does technically work, but it like it just gets kind of like finicky, right? Because like then it just closes in your face. It doesn't stay open as long. Um, where it's a lot less finicky if we just do stone. Um, right. So that is the reason why that's kind of weird. Um, there are ways to fix that using repeaters, but if you're doing something like this, I would just recommend using stone. If you really must fix it, you can do something like um say like this where you kind of delay the signal a little bit um and then it stays on for a lot longer right um but this is just a lot more complicated you can do this underground of course but like it still is more complicated than just using stone so i would recommend just using stone or wood unless you're specifically using the iron or gold pressure weights for their specific um functionality all right, guys, that'll be it for this relatively short video. I hope that the differences between pressure plates and all their functionalities is a little bit more clear because I thought that is kind of an elusive thing. So I thought it would be a little bit good to mention. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. Leave any questions you have down in the comments and I'll see you next time.